Yeah, I think they are. And a big part of it stems from Peyton Manning last year. You could see he was running out of gas even going to the playoffs and things. You're asking, uh, was at the time, I believe, a 37-year-old quarterback to be a high-volume quarterback. It's something you really shouldn't be asking a quarterback of that age to do, and we saw the same thing happen this year. I know part of it had to do with his injury, but also even before then you could see that about the midpoint of the season he started to lose something off his fastball. So I think that's a big part of it. And, and like you said, uh, Belichick over Fox, I think that's a huge advantage because Fox just – he wouldn't adjust to some of the things in these big games the way that we know Belichick can. So I think between those two things and maybe some other elements, yeah, this is a much tougher matchup for Seattle. When did Seattle change this year? I mean, this was a team that was pretty good, but a lot of people were kind of, they were an afterthought for a little while. What changed for them? Uh, I, you know, I've been watching a lot of these old Super Bowl films, you know, trying to get in the mood for the for the game this week. And you see this happen to a lot of Super Bowl teams, even like uh, the 77 Dallas team had won the Super Bowl, and they came back and played Pittsburgh in 78, and they had kind of the same thing. Tom Landry uh, had said that season that, you know, the team really didn't, you know, you, you kind of get into that Super Bowl rut, you've won the thing, and you think you can just get back there and things. And I think what happened is once they got off to that, uh, I think it was, what, a 3-3 three and three start, I think once they got to that point and realized if we make another mistake or two, you know, we might not, you know, we're going to have a tough time making the playoffs. We may not get home field. I'm going to have to go on the road. We know we're not the same team on the road. I think once their back got up against the wall, that's when things changed. I don't think they ever, uh, had a, you know, big change talent wise. I think just think that it took realizing that this thing could be taken away from them. But with, you know, if they had two more losses, let's say they might not get home field. I think that was the turning point. Are they better this year than last year? No. No, they've lost some offensive talent. They don't have a playmaker. I mean, if you think, uh, you know, forget the off-field stuff. If you're thinking Percy Harvin, the kind of playmaker he could be, I mean, look at what he did last year's Super Bowl. He had the kickoff return for a touchdown. He also led that Super Bowl in rushing, believe it or not. I mean, you lose that kind of playmaker uh, on offense, and you don't have Golden Tate. I mean, they just, they're just they not as, as explosive on offense, the Seahawks are, as they were this year. And that makes a big difference. I mean, their defense is, is still really good, but it makes a big difference that they don't have those playmakers on offense. Casey Joyner is with us, ESPN.com, NFL Insider, the Super Bowl on Sunday. I really like the matchup. To you, Casey, what is something that sticks out? I, I talked about it before you came on. I'm interested to see Gronkowski because I think the Seahawks – could be beaten. That's an area where I think that the Patriots can get them. What two matchups on for both teams kind of stick out uh, that the, each team can exploit? I'm very much for the Gronkowski matchup. I don't think Seattle is going to match up well against him. They've struggled some against tight ends this year. On the same and in the same vein, uh, I think LaFell is a vertical receiver who, if you look at Richard Sherman's year, Richard Sherman is. I, he's kind of reminds me of what Namdi Osimo was of the Raiders a couple years back. People used to say Osimo was a shutdown cornerback. Osimo wasn't a shutdown cornerback. He was a guy who'd pick off passes if he threw his way. I mean, if you got a, you know, if you threw his way, you were going to get some completions. It's just he was going to make you pay with picks. Same thing with Sherman. Sherman gives up some plays. If he's, I'm not saying he's a, you know, a liability or anything, like that, but you can hit some passes. And I think Brandon LaFell could catch a pass or two against him. That's on that side of the ball. When you're talking the other side of the ball. Seattle has shown this year and last that if you can power run the football and you're willing to stick with it, you can move the ball against them. Uh, I wrote an article for ESPN's Insider section that goes into it in more detail. But they have issues against power running teams. And what's really worse for Seattle is that if in situations where they try and add an extra defender to the box, you know, to try to you know say, hey, we've got an extra defender in the box, you can't run the football. When you look at their numbers when they do that, like numbers uh, against short passes, you know, if they can tell the other team, we've got somebody extra in the box, you got to throw the ball short, the numbers are bad there, too. So I think Tom Brady's going to go up there and just play a very simple game. Do you have the extra man in the box? Okay, I'm going to pass the football short and beat you guys that way. If you don't, we're going to power run this football to your front seven and see if you can stop us. And I think Seattle is I think Seattle's defense is going to be in for a test this week. You know, that's interesting because the secondary of the Seahawks, everybody talks about them, especially Sherman. But what about Maxwell? For two reasons, obviously. Is this a guy that you think the Patriots are going to go after? And number two, he's got a lot riding on this game, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Um, Maxwell, when he's been healthy this year, actually, if you're talking from a coverage perspective, I would actually, if you said, okay, a guy who, if, you, if I'm taking Maxwell this year or Sherman to say, I don't want anybody to catch a pass. 
I want somebody to make sure I'm going to put, you know, somebody to somebody to make sure he's not going to catch any passes and have a chance of shutting the guy out. I would rather have Maxwell because I think he's more the guy you put on somebody to make, you know, from, from a shutdown perspective and say, hey, I'm not going to throw any passes his way. Uh, but Sherman's going to be more your big play guy. So I think. I think the Patriots are probably going to be, and they're going to test Maxwell. I think they go out to Jeremy Lane if they're going to pick anybody in that secondary because Lane has been hit and miss in coverage uh, over the past couple of years. They might put in Burley instead, but if they get Lane out there, he's either a nickel or a dime back, they'll go after that matchup. But if they're going to go after either of the big corners, I still think they go after Sherman for one or, you know, try and get one or two big plays if things line up a certain way. You know, They're not going to throw crazy passes his way. Let's just say that. What's your take on Maxwell in general? I mean, he's a guy... A lot of people in Philly think, hey, he would be a good fit here because he's the you know, 6'1", big, physical, much in the mold of Kerry Williams and Bradley Fletcher. Is he more talented than those guys? I think he is. I think you can you, know, you can set him into man coverage. I think he's better at man coverage than those guys are. He got banged up this year, late in the year, and, and it was his coverage did – Suffer when that happens. So uh, you know, if he's uh, for the cat, I think I, I don't. You know, I think he's going to be healthy for this game. You know, when you have two weeks off and they can get to full health. But when he wasn't at full health, you did see a drop up in his performance. But otherwise, I had him as a red rated cornerback all year long. A red rated being a guy that you don't want to throw at and things. He's just he's that good. I don't think people have him put him in that category. I think he is that good. He's helped some by the Seattle system, but I think you could put him in any system. I think you could put him in the Philly system and. He would at least turn one of those green-rated quarterbacks that got on their defense up into at least a yellow rating. I think he's got a shot at being a red-rated quarterback even at a Philly system. How is Seattle at getting to the quarterback? Because obviously that's such a key in a game like this. If you can get to Brady, you know, neither Brady nor Russell take last week out, turn the ball over all that much. People talk about the Seattle defense all the time, but are they an elite defense in pressuring the quarterback? I don't think they are. And part of the problem with Brady is Brady's always been – <clears throat> top notch in what I, in a metric I have called bad decision rate, which is how often a quarterback makes a mental error that leads to a turnover opportunity for the other team. Brady just doesn't do it. It's like, you know, he, he goes stretches where he can go three and four games without making a bad decision. And most quarterbacks will make at least one a game, and sometimes it's, you know, it can be even more. But Brady can go you know, long stretches without making any mistakes. So part of the problem is, is that, they, that, the, that Brady is patient enough to where – he doesn't feel like he has to throw the vertical passes. Even a guy like Peyton Manning in his prime, he would get to a point to where if you made him dink and dunk, he'd do it for a little bit. Eventually he'd be like, oh, I want to get this ball downfield. I'm tired of getting these little five-yard passes. Brady will never get impatient about it. You want to give him five-yard passes? He'll take it all day long. He doesn't care if it – fine, you want to give me ten five-yard passes in a row? I don't care. I'll take the vertical pass if you give it to me. But if you make me dink and dunk, I'll do it. And I think that Seattle is not going to get him in a situation where he's going to have to force passes downfield. Unless, you know, I mean, game flow could turn it that way. But if game flow doesn't turn it that way – Brady's not going to force anything. If that happens, I could see Brady not having a turnover and the Patriots altogether not having any turnovers. Well, last week, then, four interceptions for Russell Wilson. Very uncharacteristic. What was it last week that caused him to turn the football, and can the Patriots duplicate that? Um, I you know I think they mixed up a lot of coverages. I think I think yes, the Patriots can do it because what I think it is is that the Patriots are going to sit is, are going to say like if you look back at what the Patriots did against the Broncos when they played them in the regular season, the Patriots said they put an extra man in the box a ton. I forget what it was like thirty some odd plays they had an extra guy in the box. It was like one of the most you know they they they, they basically told Denver we're taking the run game away from you. You're going to have to run against a loaded box if you're going to try and run the football. We're going to make you, Peyton Manning, beat us throwing the football. If they were, able, if they were willing to say that against Peyton Manning, you know they were willing to say that against Russell Wilson. We're going to put an extra guy in the box. We're going to make you beat us. We're going to mix our coverages up. We're going to see if you have to be a pass-first team, can you beat us? If you go back to Russell Wilson's days at North Carolina State, when he was uh, down there, before he went to Wisconsin, had the great year at Wisconsin, before he transferred out of state and went to Wisconsin, he, when he was at NC State, he was a very good quarterback, a good, very good quarterback, not a great quarterback. Looking at those tapes, I remember thinking when he was coming to the pros, I kind of took what he did at Wisconsin with a grain of salt because I had seen the NC State tapes and gone, okay, he's good, he's not great, and NC State asking going to pass the football a lot. And I think the Patriots are going to do the same thing. The Patriots are going to say, we're going to take Lynch away from you. We're going to either play zone defense so you can't just run ragged against us, uh, you know, when you're uh, with scrambling and things, or we're going to put a spy on you to make sure that you can't run, and we're going to not let you beat us running the football or Lynch beat us. You're going to have to beat us throwing the football. I don't know that Russell Wilson can do that. I'm interested. That's very interesting because there's a lot of people that ask that question. He's a very polarizing guy all of a sudden, you know, whether or not it's him, 
you know, I've said before, I think he belongs at the big boy table. And a lot of people say, well, if it's not for the defense, you know, he's not that great. And if you put him on uh, this team or that team, you know, is he turning them around? So is Wilson a guy that the Seahawks need to win this game? Do they have to lean on him to win this game? Or can they win it with Marshawn Lynch? I think if Russell Wilson is not the MVP in this game, I don't think Seattle wins this game. I think Russell Wilson has to put up an MVP performance. I don't think that Lynch is going to be able to do it just because New England's going to you know, add that extra guy to the box and say, you're just not going to do it. And I think if Russell Wilson, and I don't think he's going to be able to run the football a lot because, again, New England's either going to play his own defense, so we're all watching the quarterback and making sure that you can't scramble, or if we're playing man defense, we're going to play contain with our line and we're going to put a spy on you and make sure that you can't just run free that way. If he can't beat them with his legs and if Marshawn Lynch can't beat them, he's going to have to beat them with his arms. The problem for him is that I don't want to say that he can't be an elite quarterback throwing the football, but he's got Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse. I just lost Richardson. Their tight ends are, yeah, they're okay, but there's nothing to write home about. I mean, he's not like he's got great receivers. It's not like he's saying, hey, you've got Demarius Thomas, you've got Emmanuel Sanders, or you've got, you know, you've got, you know, some of these top notch receivers. He doesn't have that. So I think that's part of the reason that he's not been an elite passing quarterback in the, in, in the league, if you're asking him to be in pass first situations. But also, I still can't get those NC State tapes out of my head going, you were good. You certainly weren't great. You certainly weren't this elite quarterback prospect when you were asked to throw the football down there. I understand, you know, they didn't have as much talent on the NC State team. I get it. But, okay, well, you've got a little bit of a lack of talent here going up against pretty good defense. So, you know, if he's not the MVP, though, I don't think Seattle wins the game. There's very few times over the course of the 10 years we have spoken, Casey, that we disagree. But this is one of these times. I'm a big Wilson fan, and I'll say this. What if he wins this game? Let's say he maybe is the MVP. He would have beaten Manning and Brady back to back two out of three years. What would we then be? How would we classify this guy? I mean, he'd be on an island almost all by himself. Uh, we heard earlier that he's got more NFL wins than any other quarterback in his first three years in the league. How do we really classify what kind of quarterback this kid is? I think. People have made the historical comparison to say he's Fran Tarkenton. A bit of the difference is Tarkenton, when he retired, was the most prolific quarterback in NFL history. Nobody had thrown more passes, more completions, and you know he led the league in a ton of categories in career uh, career statistics. So I don't think we're able to put Wilson in that category because he's not going to ever be that sort of guy, or at least he's not there yet. But I could see him developing into being that guy. The funny thing is, is that let's say they win the Super Bowl. He could already, even if he just has a good career like another five, six, seven years, and then he hangs it up, I think you could almost argue he makes the Hall of Fame on that basis because he has two Super Bowl wins, and, and he would have beaten some of the best quarterbacks in NFL history to do so. But I think we might be able to see a guy who could develop into a much better player if Seattle will go down that path. But as long as Seattle has this great defense and if they keep a great running game and they've got guys behind Lynch who can develop into really top-notch runners, as long as, long as they have that going for the next few years, he might not have to do that. So we may end up be looking at a quarterback career-wise who ends up making the Hall of Fame by not, you know, by playing on a run-first team, which in today's day and age you think of the top quarterbacks all have to be pass-first guys. Well, he's going to be playing on a run-first team. I mean, he could still kick Canton. Pete Carroll versus Bill Belichick. Is this a decided advantage? Is this not as big an advantage as it seems like it would be? What if Pete Carroll wins this game? Then what? Is he, you know, the guy right now in this league? I think that's kind of an intriguing storyline as well. Yeah, I think he, uh, Belichick says he's got nothing but respect for Carroll and thinks he's one of the best coaches in the league. And uh, people talk about Carroll and what kind of culture he builds, and that's hugely important. Same thing with Belichick, and same thing with, you know, it's funny we talk about that in the, you know Philadelphia. And all that. That's one of the big things they're talking about is building a certain type of culture. Carroll builds that sort of culture, but Carroll's also a really creative guy, and he knows what he wants as far as players. He knows the kind of players that he wants in his defense. I remember, you know, thinking back to something Chuck Knoll said back in the day. Somebody asked, him, uh, you know, the old coach of the Steelers, uh, in the 1970 Steelers dynasty teams, and they were asking Noel, uh, boy, isn't it just uh, great that you've got all these hitters? And Noel had to remind the reporter, like, well, yeah, it's not incidental that we've got these great hitters. It's not like we just lucked into these guys. We look for that sort of player. And I think it's one of the things that, that Carroll is able to communicate to his front office. These are the sorts of players I want to play the type of defense that I want to play. That's, you know, the, the, and, and they've been able to find those sorts of players, and he's been able to develop them, but to be able to communicate what you want and for they have the front office to get the players that you want and to be able to develop those players, 
that's more than just culture. That shows that you know how to coach up a team, and that's something that I don't think a lot of people think of first when they think of Carroll. Uh, ultimately, what is the biggest difference in this game between these two teams that makes you lean one way or the other? I'm very interested to see because it sounded like you feel Wilson has to be the MVP for the Seahawks to win the game, which would almost tell me you're leaning towards the Patriots. I think the biggest thing is that the Patriots, you know, the the Seahawks can be creative play callers. I mean, you know, we saw the the fake field goal. You know, that they're willing to do trick plays and they could do creative things. But the Patriots build their entire system around being able to say we can do anything we want and we can do it with equal effectiveness. So if if they are offense, if they want to power run the football. They're not the best power running team in the league, but they've got power backs and power linemen that can do it. They can do it, you know, be effective at it. And if they want to throw short passes, they can do it. They have enough vertical explosiveness because Lothel is a guy who can get open deep, and you've got Gronk, obviously. So they've got enough on the vertical game that they can do that if that's what you give them. I look at Seattle, and I just don't see that. I don't see that they've got the ability to be able to say, we can run any type of game plan we want. If you force them to pass, I think Wilson's a really good quarterback, but again, he doesn't have great receivers, and I don't know that he operates best in a pass-first environment. Whereas New England can say, "We don't care what type of front you give us. You load the box, we can throw the you know we throw the ball. If you put seven in the box, we'll power run the ball." They can pick between those, and I don't think Seattle can do that as effectively. All right, uh, obviously, we'll get your pick in just a second here. Casey Joiner with us on the Sports Bash ninety-seven-three ESPN. Follow him on Twitter at Casey Joiner TFS and Casey the. Seahawks are a team that's trying to win back to back here, obviously, and the Patriots have so much, you know, with Belichick and Brady, they have so much experience at the two key positions in this game. Who do you feel like has that experience advantage then? The team that was just in the game last year, or, you know, this Patriots team that seems like they're in the mix all the time, but people forget they haven't been in the Super Bowl for a couple of years all of a sudden. I think you get the experience edge, the Super Bowl experience edge. I think I get that to Seattle because you look at Revis, he's not been there. I mean, Browner's been there, you know, but it's, it's, you're looking at a lot of the Patriots players have, you know, Gronk was there, but he was banged up. So he's never, you know, and, and, you know, he didn't have a very good game, frankly, at the game. He was, you know, I guess the Giants where he's banged up and things. And you're looking at a lot of their players who haven't been there, who haven't had to, you know, be under the Super Bowl spotlight because you know you can have big game spotlights, and the AFC Championship games are you know, pretty big games, and you can get Monday Night games and all those things. But there's nothing like a Super Bowl spotlight, and the Seahawks have been there before. And I think the Patriots also have because of all the off-field stuff they're going through right now. And and I don't like to lean too much on this sort of thing, but you know they've got the the last time we were here, last time we were in Glendale. It didn't go well for us, and I think that sort of thing still hangs over a team's head. So it's something that Belichick and his staff have really got to work on it and, and say, you guys got to be thinking about you know uh, about these other things. So maybe I don't know. Maybe it's a benefit that the Patriots don't have as many players who were there in Glendale, you know, because that might be helpful from that standpoint. But Seattle, I think, is going to be less apt to be like Denver was at the beginning of the game last year, where it looked like Denver was just you know shell shocked by being there. I think uh, I don't think you're going to find that with Seattle, and you probably won't find out with New England but they're going to be more apt to, to have uh, some of that impact if either team does. All right, who do you like in the game on Sunday, Casey? I got New England 27-17. I just think their offense is going to get more done than Seattle's offense, and uh, I think we're going to see Seattle as more of a one-dimensional team than people are thinking they are. 27-17, New England. That's from Casey Joyner, ESPN.com, NFL insider here on the Sports Bash. All right, uh, this will be interesting. I'm I'm really intrigued by the matchup. I love the young quarterback against the old one, this new team against this team that's always seemed to be around. It's almost like if Seattle can win this, they you know this does something big time for their franchise. It's really cool stuff story for them and uh, if New England gets this man the hate's going to be spewing from all over the place we'll see it all unfold Super Sunday Casey it's always a pleasure pal enjoy the game hey same to you man appreciate it